and we are live. Thank you for being here, everyone, at um, Monica Campana Wellness, Nutrition and Health um, Connection uh, with uh, wonderful entrepreneurs. Today we have um, Katie Hadley, all the way from California, who's going to tell us her unique way of uh, helping people in, um, in different ways. And um, please, Katie, tell us everything about yourself, your background, and uh, what are you doing today to help people in their journey to get better and feel better? Hi, Monica. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, so I am a holistic health coach, a functional nutritionist, and also a personal trainer. Um, and so I got into the field of health um, pretty early on as a teenager. I had my own um, health struggles and was kind of got to the point of being tired of taking the pills and, um, and decided that I wanted to, to look at just improving the, the root cause of, of the dysfunction. And the real reason was because I just felt like I wasn't living my best life. And I wanted to be, right? Don't we all? So, um, so over the years, I, I got into personal training and then nutrition and then functional medicine and kind of pieced these together. Um, and now I'm able to help individuals to optimize their own health so that they can start living their best life. So. Now, functional, you said functional nutritionist. Now, what's the difference? Because some people don't know the difference between a normal nutritionist and a functional nutritionist. Great question. So functional nutrition really focuses on how whole natural foods um, can play a role in promoting health within the body. Um, and so we, it, it, it's very individualized based on each person. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's looking at what is this individual's unique needs and what foods, what way of eating um, will support this person's health. Hmm, and so that's sort of that's sort of the unique difference there. That's the difference. And by the way, whoever is logging in, and uh, I'm going to repeat it again, but um, you're you're offering a free. So you have to stay until the end, and you offer a, a free uh, consultation, right? For um, yes. uh, you know, you offer a special um, special consultation to whoever uh, stays until the end. And, uh, and writes yeah, a comment sure. and requests it. So I'm going to repeat it at the end, but you know, I had to say it at the beginning too, for people to know that uh, they get a special treat, okay, with, uh, with Katie. But Katie, so tell me, we were talking about, about all these resolutions, New Year resolutions. Now, you know, we're approaching the end of the year and then everybody's uh, you know, going to be pumped up and doing these New Year's resolutions. And usually they revolve around losing weight, doing more exercise. And usually they last one month, maybe two months. And that's it. Now, what do you do? What do you suggest? How can you help people in that yeah. sense? Yeah, you're right. Studies show that most people fall off of their New Year's resolutions around February, which is a little bit discouraging considering that's only the second month out of the 12. So, um, you know, New Year's resolutions, while they're great in the sense that, you know, who doesn't want to, to optimize themselves to better themselves, but, you know, in and of itself, like that's a great idea. But the way that we go about it sets us up for failure, right? So typically what we see with New Year's resolutions is around diets and around like gym, the gym memberships. And that might be a little bit different right now with gyms being closed and everything, but usually it's around exercise and nutrition. And what happens is we create this, this specific, um, specific way that we say we're going to do it. I'm going to work out three days a week, or I'm going to follow this specific diet. And what it doesn't take into account is that our lives, right? Like our lives change. We have priorities shift. We have time restraints. We have all these different things. And so if we're saying this one specific thing is what defines my success, of course we're going to fail. There's going to be weeks where you can't work out three days a week. What if you decide you actually don't like going to the gym, right? So instead, what we do is we shift that goal um, by first diving into why, why it's so important. 
why is going to the gym three days a week so important? And we keep asking why, 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 why? Oh, it's important because you want to lose weight? Well, why do you want to lose weight? Oh, because you want to feel better about yourself? Why? Oh, because of this, because of this. And what it comes down to, most people, you know, they, they don't care about being bodybuilders, right? They want to have the ability to like get on the floor and play with their kids or go for that hike when they go on vacation or just like feel good, not wake up in pain every day. So when we connect with these bigger whys, then we can set goals around what's actually going to get you there because it might not be the three days a week in the gym. Maybe our New Year's resolution is I'm going to start prioritizing my health you know, by moving the way that feels best for me, by eating the way that supports my body. And then month by month, we can adapt that for, for what you're feeling now, for what your life looks like right now. And so while the goal is the same, right, we're focusing on health, how you're doing it, um, you can adjust it as you go. And so that's what I do with my clients. And that's really my belief is how can we create this lifestyle that supports health? Not a 30-day diet, not a trend, not a challenge, but how can we live to foster health and adapt that as we grow and we change and our lives evolve? In the, in the long term, in the long... Exactly. You know, it's, uh, so you go to the root of the issues and you go to the root um, of the of, of what needs to be changed because you know some people they, they they may think it's something and it's not it so you go you dig really down and so what is you base your um your teachings into the six pillars right what are yeah. the six pillars yeah so the six pillars are this is the, the framework that I use, that I developed, that encompasses all these different aspects of what is health really, right? Because we just talked about it's not a gym membership. Health isn't a diet. It's something much bigger than that. So I, I created these six pillars, which is um, the framework of how to create a healthful lifestyle. So the six pillars are starting off with whole food nutrition. This is super important because we need to have a foundation of nourishment for our body and a sustainable way of eating, right? Not a diet. The second part is going to be functional fitness. So once again, not focusing on being a bodybuilder, we're just focusing on supporting our body, um, you know, the, the flexibility we need, the functional strength we need just to live our best life and, and do our day-to-day -day activities. Um, and also get the mental health benefits from that as well. Next, we have sleep and optimizing that sleep-wake cycle. This is probably the number one that I see with most people is that they are not resting enough or in the right way. So focusing on that is, is key. Next, we have reducing our toxic load. And this isn't like a celery juice cleanse, right? Like we know that there's a lot of pollution. We know that there are a lot of allergens. We know that BPA and plastic, right? And so it's just about looking at, at these, different, um, these different sources of toxins that could be creating things like resistant weight loss or insulin resistance, diabetes. Next, we have the daily mindfulness. This is so important because we're often just going around um, sort of in this, um, sort of in this of almost a fog where we're just going through the motions. But when we get back in touch with our mindset and with why we're doing it and creating maybe a meditation practice or just focusing on our breath throughout the day, um, creating this, this mindfulness can be um, really key for um, um, connecting the mind with the body, right? Because we're really just one. Next, we have community. And community is so important because what I see is, you know, when I first started as a personal trainer, um, clients would come to me and they would get these amazing results when they first started. But as soon as they stopped working with me, they would just kind of go back to, to what they were doing before. And I realized we need to create community within your own life, right? I can't be your only source of support. When you think about it, most people don't really have anyone to talk to about their health, about their goals, about these intimate things that are so important to us. And so we really focus on creating that community of individuals um, to help support you in your pursuit of, um, of your health. And, and so those life. are the pillars. Yeah, exactly. And so those are the pillars um, that, we, that we really focus on. 
And to do that, you have like, uh, for example, now you have Facebook groups to create this community sense right now online. The, yeah. Is yeah. that how you create yeah. it right now? I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a really good question. So it's, it's, um, multifaceted. So yes, Facebook groups are great ways for connecting people. Um, also just like individuals, um, you know, sometimes my clients want to just be connected with each other kind of offline and, you know, right now, maybe it's more like texting, those sorts of things, but also looking at each individual's life specifically. So not just a community that I'm creating for them, but a community that they can create with the people around them, you know, and this is especially relevant, you know, I, I work with individuals all over the U.S. So they're not always within my community physically, they might be somewhere else. So we identify who are the people in your life right now who support you? Who are the people um, that maybe don't know what you're going through, but you think would be supportive? And we identify what kind of support they can provide, whether it's tangible support, right? Helping cook dinner or whether it's like emotional support. Um, and we identify ways um, to integrate these different people into, um, into their lives so that they can create that community for themselves as well. Wow, that's wonderful. So you really have like a truly holistic, uh, <laughs> you know, with, an, with a W, not with an H, uh, approach to, to health. It's, it's wonderful. And how do you, so you have one-on-one -on -one mainly, or do you have also some small group um, courses or, that you offer? So right now I do one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I feel that each individual's unique health journey is so unique, right? Like for, for each of us, health looks so different. And um, so what happens is um, when, when individuals first start working with me, it's a one-on-one -on -one setting. And then when they're done, if they want to, they can move into more of like a group, kind of like a maintenance support type um, group after they've um, identified what building that healthy lifestyle looks like for them and they've been able to implement it and then it's a little bit more hands-off and it's just kind of more support in that way. I see and uh, and again people can find you I think we put all the information on the uh, the best way to to find you um, is uh, through your website through your email what is the best way yeah. to get in contact yeah. with you? So my website is katiehadley.com um, Katie is spelled K-A-Y-T-E-E. -E. Um, and you can find me on Instagram at Katie Hadley, kind of all, all the socials is, um, that's where I'm at. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, let's see, let's see, because usually, yeah, we get, I got a comment here. We got one person, I don't know where this person is based, but do you actually um, treat people from around the world or it has to be as long as they speak English or, and they have a way to, to pay like through PayPal or, um, or you uh, focus on uh, the United States? Um, so unfortunately I only speak English. Um, so in order to communicate, yes, English speaking. Um, my, I don't have any international clients at this time, but if there, there was an international individual who felt like we really connected, that's definitely something that we could, we could of talk course. about. But I'm, yes, all, of course. all over the, all over the United States, even before all this COVID started, everything I do is virtual. I find that that is the most accessible way to be able to connect with people in their homes. Most of us are living pretty busy, crazy lives, right? Um, and so it's just really nice to be able to pop on the screen and, you know, interact that way. I even do the workout plans that I write for my clients. Even that is app-based. So I have an app where I just shoot them their workouts. We can, you know, talk um, about what's working, what's not, and adapt as necessary. But everything is virtual-based to make it the most accessible um, for everyone. Wow. And as long as, um, as far as the, um, the meditation and the mind exercises, uh, you have some specific exercises, according to the person, of course, uh, you have meditations, you have, uh, I heard also like breath work. Uh, what, do you, what do you like? What do you prefer to use? Okay. Yeah. The, the mindset pillar, I think the mindfulness pillar, I think is really the broadest because it looks so different for different people. For example, for myself, I love yoga. I love that breath to movement connection with my body. And I also really like 
to do um, meditation and breath work. For other people, that looks different. Sometimes people want to do mindfulness and meditation around food or around body image or about gratitude or about sleep. So it can be all these um, different um, all these different ways that we can look at mindfulness. Another way that I think about mindfulness too is mindfulness about self-care and about stress and how we're managing that and keeping that in the body and how we can sort of release that. Another way that I think about mindfulness is our relationship to our body and our relationship to food. So many of us are so used to thinking about weight loss being the key for health and for beauty and for all these things and that's just not true and so recreating and um, retraining our brain um, to to not think about our body that way and to not think about food that way and to not put this weight loss on a pedestal for everyone because it might not be for everyone and so mindfulness just once again this unique approach it just it depends on the individual and their needs but yes it can take many different forms forms and now going back to nutrition and and all this stuff you don't believe in diets right <laughs> yes diet. i would say that i'm anti-diet <laughs> uh, yes yes and why 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 you don't believe in diets oh so many reasons <laughs> Diets set us up for failure, right? What is a diet? If you think about the word diet and it's like the usual sense that we use it, we're talking about a short term change, usually to promote weight loss. Once again, we just talked about weight loss is not the epitome of health. What, what happens is, is we end up prioritizing weight loss or that kind of superficial outcome versus prioritizing the healthy behaviors because I could chop off my arm and I'll lose, I don't know how much weight right there. That doesn't mean it's healthy, right? If you can eat nothing but celery for a week, yes, you'll lose weight. Is that healthy? No, no, it's not. So instead, we focus on these healthful behaviors that might, for some people, promote weight loss if that's what their body needs at that time. So the diet mentality is is focused on weight loss often, and it's often not sustainable, right? If you cut out carbs, that's not sustainable, nor is it healthy. Often these diets go against a lot of the science. Science shows us that long-term super low-carb diets are not good for you. You know, we could dig into all that science. That, that's a whole other thing. But, but by creating these diets that are based on, um, on simply getting pounds off of you, and they're not focused on creating health, what really happens is we end up going against our goals because not only now maybe we lost 10 pounds on the diet, but as soon as we go back to our way of eating, of course, we're going to put it back on. That's not sustainable to do that. And so instead focusing on a sustainable way of eating and instead of taking food out and being like, you can't have this, you can't have this. It's like, how can we nourish your body? Most people aren't getting enough vitamins, minerals, fiber, all these nutrients that make our body run at its best. And so instead of taking away, we want to focus on adding. And once again, that's unique to each person, which diets are not. So by focusing on a whole food diet, we're looking at taking away, and I use diet here as just like an eating pattern. If we focus on a whole food eating pattern, instead, now we're focusing on foods that nourish our body and we add instead of take away. That's wonderful. And uh, you probably think the same thing, I mean, about doing exercise and and uh, um, establishing a a habit that lasts longer than than one month uh, it i guess you need a gradual change in your life you know those people that go into to the gym and they they want to do everything and then they feel you know so bad the day after they're hurting everywhere um you probably you know you believe that uh, first of all this doesn't work but uh, you give gradual uh, exercises as far as, as far as physical activities, right? You do, what is your approach? When, if somebody yeah. doesn't do anything, like yeah. from scratch, what do you suggest? They, they start walking. I mean, that's right. Maybe, maybe. Uh, because... it, de it depends on, yeah, it depends on the person. You're right. Like just setting this generic goal of going to the gym three days a week and then you're sore and then you don't want to go. And then, you know, what about when your child care falls through and all these things? So I think that the first thing 
that's, that's really important when you're thinking about starting an exercise routine or getting back into an exercise routine is, first of all, what do you enjoy? Because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it, right? If you hate going to the gym, don't go to the gym. Like, just don't do it. Like, do something at home. If you like being outside, let's figure out something you can do outside. So finding what you like to do, what you enjoy, what feels good for your body. And once again, this might change. It might be yoga right now. It might be lifting weights later. It might be running a marathon next year. Who knows? Finding what you enjoy and then figuring out how we can make it realistically fit into your life, right? Taking into account transportation, childcare, timing. Do you live in a safe neighborhood? Can you go for a run? Do you have space in your home to do a, a, a hit workout if that's what you're into? So figuring out the logistics of um, what's realistic and what's not, and then modifying the, um, the plan to, to fit you. And then once again, adjusting that in the future if needed. That's wonderful. Well, Katie, um, we're almost, uh, almost at the end of our interview and uh, we had a few people watching, then they leave, but we don't know. I mean, there's only one person who left a comment and we don't know if they live in, in, in the States, but uh, if uh, someone would like to have a free consultation, um, what is it, half an hour, 40 minutes? consultation. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to offer this to, to um, your audience. Um, so it's called the health audit. And what it is, is it's a chance for us to get together, look at your, those six pillars we talked about, look at them in your life and see which areas do you need support with and how can we um, get you from where you are right now to that big goal, that underlying why. And we kind of create this roadmap um to get you from here to there now in order to do that um yes yeah, so it's usually 45 minutes to an hour um first when you sign up i send you this nice long questionnaire it's a chance for you to reflect on your lifestyle um, and it also gives me a, um, a little bit of an insight into what, how i can help support you and then when we get on our call we can jump right in and talk about um creating this roadmap and then from there um, obviously, if you decide you want to work together long term, we implement that that roadmap um, to to actually get to get you there. And if not, great, you you still have a, a roadmap to get you started. That's nice. That's wonderful. Well, let's let's put it this way: if if they mention like my show, maybe I'll just leave it. And um, if they mention my name and my show, then you know you can you can offer it to them because uh, we're going to have Perfect. this also on YouTube and uh, we're going to create a YouTube channel for health, wellness, and, and nutrition. So um, I'm just going to put all these interviews. So that's all you're going to see. And um, well, uh, I think we covered, the idea is um, we covered a lot. We still have a lot more. I know. So we, we, we need to have you back, Katie. And um, thank you so much for what you're doing. You're, you're helping people really get to the, the root of their uh, underlying uh, issues, you know, that sometimes people don't, you know, first of all is acknowledging that there is something wrong because some people don't mm -hmm. even acknowledge it, but once they do, then they should talk to someone like you because it's, um, you know, you really look at the, the overall, um, the whole umbrella of, uh, of possibilities. And um, thank you again, Katie. Good luck. Good luck with, uh, with your endeavor. And, uh, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much, Monica. It was an okay. Thank you very much to everyone. And uh, I will see you uh, very soon, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Have a wonderful week.